Hey, good morning, everybody. I hope you all are enjoying this time of solitude and introspection and ready for all of the big shifts that are happening and really utilizing this time to go inwards and find yourself even more. So today I am here to talk about being a manifesting generator and a very simple tip that you can use in order to move into the things that you actually want to do in life versus the things that you do for other people or out of context. And it's such a super simple tool. And to be honest with you, it's something that we should be taught very early on in life. However, we're not. And this tool can be used for everybody. However, it's extremely important for manifesting generators. And as a spiritual counselor, I do teach all of my clients to this regardless of what's in their chart. But as a manifesting generator, if you use this tool, you will stop burning out and getting frustrated with things that you're doing that you really shouldn't be doing. And I really want to explain, first of all, the human design came into my life about seven years ago, and I had some really amazing teachers. I, my readings were done for, from firsthand people who dealt with Rue himself and who were really on the actual spectrum of the human design. It wasn't the passed down stuff that you're seeing a lot these days. And there are very specific books that are designed from the actual human design that he created versus a lot of them that are made from other people who kind of put their spin on it. And that's a very important thing for me. And so the reason why I have not shared as much as I wanted to and why I only dabble with it is because I wanted to master the manifesting generator within myself in order to share that with others and to learn everything that I did from my teachers and those who learned from Rue himself and to really harness that energy and to, to take it step by step. And I am going to be putting more out there um, in, the next few, in the next few days, in the next few weeks actually. And it's not just gonna be for manifesting generators anymore, it's actually gonna be for all of the, the chart aspects and I am doing readings on a more regular basis now. It's something that I decided to step fully into, I wanna say about mid last year when I started doing readings and decided, you know what, this is something I really need to move forward with. However, there's been a lot of movement and I <laughs> moved from New Mexico to Colorado and now I am in Hollywood. And so it's been a big transition and I am at a place where I have gotten the message that it's time to move forward with this so, with, being, with that being said, um, I'm a little bit excited, so I have a lot of energy going on right now. Um, but the tool that I really want to share with you guys is our first language. Our first language is sound. We, we praise babies a lot for when they speak their first word. However, we fail to acknowledge that they actually have a first voice before they ever say a word and we do it every single day. When you are making a decision, you have a first feeling that comes up, and if you allow that feeling to vocalize, it comes out as a sound. And a lot of times, like let's say somebody asks you, hey, you wanna go get drinks, and you're not feeling it, you're kinda like, mm, and that, that sound that you make is your first voice. And that is saying no. When you say mm, that's actually your body and your natural response saying no, I'm not interested. And a lot of times we, we don't listen to that voice and we, we jump ahead and we say, okay, why not anyway? And sure, you might end up having fun, but it'll deplete your energy when you go against that first instinctive voice. When there's something that you really want, there's absolutely no hesitation. It's like this like excitement that comes up and it's like, yes, like this is it, like yes. And you know, it's like someone offering you your favorite slice of pizza and you haven't eaten in weeks, and you're just like, ah, oh, yes, like it's like a natural voice that comes up. It is a desire, it's a feeling, and you can literally feel it moving from your solar plexus up into your throat, and like a projection that wants to come out. And we do it every single day with our partners, with, with our teachers, with our coworkers, with everybody in life. We have this natural voice that comes out, and we don't acknowledge it. And as a manifesting generator, it is one of your biggest tools, one of the most simple tools that you can use to really stand in your integrity and to move forward with projects and with people that are 
the yes is for you. You know, it's like, <laughs> I can't think of how many times for myself that I have been presented with certain opportunities and the voice that came up was, mm, and it was because there was a big hesitation because I really didn't want to. It wasn't what would light the fire inside of me. It wouldn't ignite passion. And I ignored that on so many times and then I would end up quitting. Like regardless of if it was a job or a relationship, I went along with it because I thought I should be doing something. And that is a huge challenge for manifesting generators is we always feel like we should be doing something. However, and I know I said this in my last video, it's about responding. It's about waiting for the time to respond. When there is something that is offered to you, you wait and you see if the feelings in your body are drawing you towards that or pushing you away from it. And we have a tendency to think, overthink things. Like we need to analyze every aspect of it instead of really following that internal voice. And so the next time, I challenge you, the next time that that comes up, when somebody asks you to do something, or if somebody asks you about somebody else and you get that internal voice that comes up where it's like hesitation and you can feel it as you as it like makes a sound coming out of your mouth listen to that and just go with that natural answer you don't have to explain to people why if it's a no just say no you're not interested it is okay to tell people no and if it's a yes ride with it see where it takes you even if it seems like it's so off par like to be honest with you i had absolutely no intention in moving to la absolutely none ever i i remember thinking a long time ago that's definitely a place i would never move to not into the big cities not into what it is here um however i was guided to be here and it was a strong pull to come to this retreat and I was like, okay, like I got that full body. Yes, I'm gonna go to that retreat. And that retreat turned into so many other things. And it ended up pulling me out of Colorado a whole lot quicker than I thought. But I went with a yes, and so I'm here now. And as for what's happening, that's still behind the scenes, not really ready to talk about that. However, it was a big yes, and so I followed it, even though it was something that I never anticipated. So just go with the yeses and see where they lead you. And truly stick with saying no when you feel a no. When it's a maybe, you'll get, you'll, you'll know. The hesitation of a no is completely different than a maybe. And you just have to trust your intuition and to trust that, that voice that's coming up for you and to know when you wanna say yes and when you wanna say no. And this is my spiritual counselor coming in, but if there is a reason you're afraid to say no, I ask you to think about that and, and to see if you can remove yourself from that situation. I know that there are a lot of people out there who they are afraid to tell certain people no because of the backlash that they're going to get for it. And that is an opportunity for you to step outside of relationships that you do not need in your life. That's a plain and simple statement. It's easier said than done, I know. But if you follow this simple step of learning to navigate this voice, this first instinctual voice before words, you will really be able to learn what it is your soul wants. And really being, you'll just be able to move forward in life so much easier. You're not gonna have so much hesitation. You're not gonna put yourself in situations that you don't really wanna do, which is just gonna deplete your energy. And so then the things that you actually wanna do you're just not going to have time for it. You're not going to have the energy or space to do it because you're feeding something that you really don't want. And this is including relationships. And I know it's hard for a lot of people to, to see themselves outside of the relationships and to and not imagine being with this specific person because of certain patterns. And, and it's difficult. It is. And I've had a lot of clients who they were not happy in relationships, but they couldn't get out of them. They've wanted to get out for a couple years. And this tool alone helped so many that I know get out of relationships within a few weeks because they really started listening to that voice and realized if they really want to be happy and to have something that is in alignment with them, they can't hold on to the things that are no longer serving them. So utilize this voice, allow it to be movement in every aspect of your life and honor it. It is there 
since since we're, before we could speak, like I said, it's infancy. It's when we are born, we have that sound. Crying was our first language. And that was us saying, hey, something's not right. And we're taught to put that aside as adults, right? But when we cry, we need to listen to that. It's releasing emotion. It's showing that something's not right and something needs to be reset. And, and that itself is healing, like releasing it. And, and it's just so beautiful. And so I challenge you to tap into this, this voice and, and see where it takes you. I'd be really interested to see if um, anybody else has experienced this voice and if they utilize it and if this is something that you've um, you know, navigated in your life prior to this. I've been doing this for the last seven years and no, I don't hold true to it all the time. I have gotten myself into situations that I would have happily decided not to do if I had gone back again. Yes, it's not regret. It's just like, oh, I didn't have to do that, you know? And so anyway, that's all. I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.